Now, up until this point, I had used authentication to simply just allow who would uh, see certain pages and what items they would see, essentially wanting to only see their own passwords. So just a quick review here. If I log in, okay, I only see my things here. I don't see everything. And uh, in fact, if I go to view uh, a one that I know exists, you can look at that in my database. So here's um, two, I can see that. But if I try to see four, it just takes me right back to here. That might not be the best way to handle it. So I'm only seeing mine. Also, there are some um, views out there that I don't, I, I don't allow anyone to see. You can see you're not authorized to perform this action. Okay, but I'm gonna start using um, E's built-in uh, Re, uh, roles um, based access controls and a, a lot of people get controlled about how to actually implement it and what it does and this is going to be a two-part video the first one is I'm going to actually show you how to set it up and the second part I'll actually implement it and there are a few gotchas here and a, a few things that are confusing let's start first of all by loading the component the component here I'm going to load after my database and this component is um, authentication manager I'm using the class CDB, which is Database Authentication Manager, rather than PHP. PHP would mean everything's essentially hard-coded. And I'm going to use the connection of the database here, which is the same database I've been using all along. Now that absolutely works and everything's fine, but I've got to um, put some tables um, into my database so that this Authentication Manager um, can write to those tables. The easiest way to find those tables is I'll just open a file here. Uh, this file here, I'm actually going to show you where it is. So open file. This is located in your framework under web under um, auth, which obviously stands for authentication. Here I've got my regular PHP files, but I've also got these uh, SQL schemas. Now this one here is for MySQL. Um, depending on your flavor of database, you may choose something else. But here's MySQL, and what it does, it gives you the actual SQL code for creating these tables. That's all it does is check to see if the table is created. If it isn't, it uh, if it is, it deletes it, and then creates the other tables. So I'm going to copy all of this code and use MySQL Workbench, like I said, I like to use. Here I am in MySQL Workbench, and I can just run through each one of these by hitting Control Enter. Semi, the semicolon stops it from continuing to execute. And there's a reason I want to do that. So I create that table. Now this table has a composite primary key. And for now, I'm going to delete that. Create the table and put it back. Again, composite key, create the table, and then put it back. Now, if I look at my database, I see that I've got these three new tables here. I can also, in Isaac Workbench, just say, hey, describe the table there. And we can see that these are the two for that table with only one primary key, not a composite primary key. Now, why did I take out the primary key? Well, because what we need to do is we need to use the G tool for creating our models and our controllers and our views along with it. So here's G. Make sure that it's activated. It'll ask us for the password which is stored in the main file. It's a weird password. Enter your password here. I don't push this to my production so Okay, now I'm going to first of all create my models. I like the model creation because it just says I can use the asterisk and create all my models. Here it says, uh, hey, passwords models changed. Do you want me to overwrite that? Because it went back and read all the tables. It said these haven't changed. We don't need to update those. I did write something in there and I'm going to leave it. So I'm just going to create these new models. Going back, you can see now here. It looks like there were some models, new models. Yes, I've got these three new models right here. Now I need to create the controllers. And I'm going to create 
the uh, the whole CRUD, you know, the create, read, update, and delete right here. This doesn't allow me to do a asterisk. I got to do each one. So I go to models, get the name here, control C. See, that's the one I want. I preview and it says, do you want all of these? And I'm just going to say right now, yes. And it generates them. I'll go ahead and do it for all of these. Generate. And the last one, generate. Now if I go back to my code here, I can see that I've got some new controllers. Yes, I've got uh, uh, the three new controllers. I've also got some new views. And you can see the folders there with the three new views. Now the thing is, is that G does not like composite keys. Now I created code, but G does nothing with the database. So I'm going to go back to my SQL Workbench, and I'm just going to redo all of this, starting with deleting it. And now I'm going to create it. I don't need to do this one again, but we'll go ahead and do them all. OK, I've created those table, deleted them, then created them. Now when I describe this table, you can see here I got two primary keys. Okay, and that's the way the authentication manager wants it. Well, now that I've uh, enabled and essentially established the authentication manager to work, I got to put some information in the table. And this is where a lot of people got confused. You know, the code was written, you know, that you say, hey, here's the rules you got to create. It says you only need to create it once. Well, I know it's not saying you need to put data in the tables, but that's really what it's saying. Is you need to put data in the tables. Well, how are we going to do that? Um, I could just do it with my views. So this is a uh, controller, and if I hit this, you can see that I don't have any ch um, items yet, and I could just create it right here. Oops. Wants me to log in first. And that's the whole point of doing the uh, the crud. Is now I could just put them in right here, but I'm not going to do that because I want you to see what the what happens. I want a more in-depth understanding of how code gets executed in Yi and and how how uh, that happens to the tables. In the article on authentication, it says here we go. We've got all of these um, initial values here to, to set up your roles. It creates an operation. There's three things. There's an operation a task and a role okay and here we see we're creating a role creating a task creating an operation those are three different parts of the authentic authentication system but how do we execute these well it's really when you're executing you're just putting tables uh, data in the tables so let's get a better understanding of how ye works okay here we are in ye and it says here that I'm gonna go remember I use URL manager I'm going to go to the site controller and execute the action login. So what I'll do here is I'll just create my own controller. Not a bad idea to do that. New PHP file. I'm going to call that my init controller. The name controller at the end is critical. You have to have that. Also, what's interesting is you don't have this closing PHP sign. There we go. There's my init controller. 
Well, what I want to do is I want to create a new class um, that extends the controller class. So here I've got a new controller class, my init controller, that extends the controller class. Again, this my init and this controller are very important that the names be there. Next, I want an action. So here's my action. The action is actually run. So this says that my init controller extends controller and it has one action called run. Well, let's see how this works here. I'll just do a simple PHP command echo. Save that. Now, remember, I'm doing the control my init and the action run. Now, if you're ahead of me here, then you are understanding how this works. So my init run. I am running. Okay, so this is great. This means that we're going to execute some code there. Let me copy all of this stuff here that in the example it said to initialize your application with, which again, it's just putting data in the tables. That's all it's doing. Okay, and I'm going to change my message here. And then I'm going to rerun that. I have entered the code. It looks like it did it all correctly. Let's go look at our database. We got authentication items here, and you can see all of this information that was entered in. Okay, again, we have three different types of items. We have an operation, which is of type 0. We have a task, which is of type 1. And then we have a role, which is of type 2. Okay, so these are all my authentication items. In my authentication assignments, I have uh, the user admin D is an admin. Ad um, reader A is a reader, and so on and so on. So that's all this did. We created some operations, we created some tasks, we created some roles, and then we assigned those roles to different users. Now this makes more sense that I would assign a role here when a user is created, not uh, manually through an init process. But if you need to init some things in your tables, this is a, this is a way to do it using PHP. And you, you could even create a user interface for doing this. The last thing I want to point out is this rule here, this one rule here. We've got uh, return, and this is going to return true if the current user ID is equal to the parameter post authentication ID. So essentially saying, you know, hey, did you, uh, is the user ID currently the, the, the ID that was passed in? And that business rule was assigned when I created the task. Of course, I could assign a business rule to an operation. Um, or even a role, but let's look at that business rule. And there's that business rule right there. It's just sitting there as, as one of the parameters. No, that's the only one that's written there. Okay, now I haven't gotten into the child and, and parent, and I'll dig into that a little bit more when I actually implement the authentication. The whole reason I went through the, uh, the CRUD creation is now what I can do is I can actually go here, and we don't want that controller name at the end, and if I do this, where does this go? It goes to the controller and performs the action index. Here now it's showing me all of the assignments. And from here I could create an assignment. I can manage the assignments, although it's, I'm not authorized to do this action. Yeah. Um, and I could do all of that here through my cred manager. So I didn't need to do this initial uh, my init controller, but I think it's very important to understand my init controller and what it does and how easy it is to, to, to use that and to manually type in controllers and, and uh, views and everything like that. So that is the very basics of the uh, roles-based um, access controller. Um, in the next step, I'll explain what that actually means and implement it um, and showing how that actually is used. But I think this is a really good start.